Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah, I'm privileged to be have the uh, first message of the year. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the. Uh, my purpose of the speech is to, to know what. <laughs> to know what's the real meaning of in the image of God and how it. How can we proclaim God's love by knowing our image or in His image? So let's start with John, Genesis 1.26. It says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. That's very true. In our image, in God's image, and in our likeness. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. You see, um, our entity our image in, it's called in the scriptures spirit spirit of man God's knowledge according to the scripture in 1st Corinthians 3.11 his knowledge lies in the eternal right so he is holy he is eternal and our knowledge lies in our spirit meaning that we cannot understand what God understands what he has if we don't have his spirit so Ours is different, his is different. We have our human spirit. What I'm trying to say is we have our human spirit and there is the spirit of God. Our knowledge of God comes from the spirit of God. Now, let's listen now. This is, to me, a paradigm shift. The importance is that it reveals our human spirituality. What does that mean? I am made in God's image. God is spirit. God has given me a human spirit. It means I am a man with a, I am a man, I am a spirit with a body. I am not a body with a spirit. We are primarily a spirit having a body. We are primarily a spirit in God's image, having a body. We are not a body with a spirit. Our body is not our identity. When I first learned this, I, I could not believe that. Because when God said, make us mankind in our image, I thought, this body is me. No. Let's see some scriptures. John 4, 23, verse 24. Yet the time is coming and has now come when true, the, true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirits in the spirits and in truth, for they are the kind of words at first. The Father 6, verse 24, God is spirit, and of his worshipers must worship in the spirit. The nature of worship is spiritual. It is the union of our spirit, man's spirit, with the spirit of God. Our spirit with the spirit of God it must be united. You see, what happened was when Adam sinned, God had to leave the human spirit, our spirit. Our spirit now is vacant. The greatest tragedy, tragedy that happened is when the great I am left my I am. <laughs> yes, when the great I am, in our image, the I am left my I am. That was the fall. But our spirit is so closely guarded that no one can enter. And that's only by invitation. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person. You see, God cannot even enter our human spirit unless by invitation. And if we invite Him, our spirit, infused with His spirit, is our identity. We are a spirit. Can, can you say that with me? I am a spirit having a body. I am, I am destined to be in power. Uh, I am infused with God's Spirit. I, I am. I have God's Holy Spirit in me. It will take time, and I will. I will uh, it took time for me. See, it's still confusing a bit. See, I, I still believe I'm physical. I have a human body, but then it says in Romans eight nine. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but realm of the spirit. Really? I am still in the flesh. What do you mean realm of the spirit? Is the Bible true? 
What I feel, what I believe, is it true or should I rely on the Bible? Who will stand? My word or God's word? Who will I believe? My experience or God's? You, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh but in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you. If anyone, boy this is a warning, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Religious externals, baptism, communion, have no meaning without the Holy Spirit. I am a spirit infused with Christ. My body is not my identity. Now let's see some scriptures. What does this mean? Ephesians 21, 22. Uh, Ephesians 2, 21, 22. It says, In Him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him you are being built together with a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. Well, I know this scripture, but then I realize, wait a minute. God is Spirit. He wants to dwell inside of me. Will the Spirit dwell inside the flesh? No. How can He dwell in me? I must have a spirit. And His spirit and my spirit, He will not dwell in flesh. The only way that God can dwell inside of me is if I open up my spirit. And if His spirit is in me, what do I have? Holy Spirit. I am an eternal spirit. Actually, I am an eternal spirit having a body. Do you believe that? You see, it's, it's important to understand. And then, when, when you understand it, it's so, it's so liberating. When you look at the scriptures, they're different now. What? Uh, can the spirit mix with flesh? No. Rebel uh, Romans 8, 5, 8 says, Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh. Desires, but those who live according to the spirit, their minds are set on the spirit. Now, wait a minute. What does that mean? The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. What does that mean? I must be governed by spirit, but what does that really mean? And then I look at the scriptures. Remember Christ's first temptation, what did Satan say? Turn the stones into bread. What did God, Christ say? Hey, not my body. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of spirit. I am not a body. Primarily, I am a spirit. That's why man should live by the word of God. When Christ caught the woman in adultery, remember? And they were condemning her. Christ saw the spirit of the woman. Guilty, but, you know, asking for mercy. And he was able to give her forgiveness. When Samuel went to anoint King David in Jesus, remember the Jesus uh, house? What did God say? No, no, not. I want David, the shepherd. Samuel was looking at the outside, the flesh. But God was looking in the spirit. I can go on and on and on. Our central core is our human spirit being led by the spirit of God. Central core. So we are a spirit. Now, how do we proclaim God's love? How do we proclaim God's love that knowing we are a spirit having a body, not a body? How do we do? And then I realize. Wars, tragedy, have been fought by flesh. What has the color of your skin do with eternal life? With God in heaven. Recently, there are fights because of the color of our skin. Can we not just go beyond our flesh and see the spirit inside? That is how Christ, when he was on earth, saw people. That's why he could heal them. He could go to them. Prostitutes. You know, Roman centurion. No, no. He doesn't see distinguishes. He sees people. He sees spirits. He sees the heart, the will. He sees beyond the flesh. Wars were fought by what? Our customs, traditions, languages. We have divided the human race by countries, by languages, by everything else because of the flesh. And that's why. When, when we look at the scriptures, when we will be resurrected, remember, in the twinkling of eye, our bodies, our bodies will be in God. It's the easy thing to do because we are already transformed inside. Our spirit is the spirit of God. And God, to, to transform our to remove our body is just simply easy to do for God. But our spirit, if we have the spirit of God, then we can start loving people. And looking past beyond the bodies, 
their bodies, whoever they are, prisoners, you know, politicians, whoever they are. That's why Christ, when he came, he spoke boldly. And now I understand why he can come to the you know, synagogue and speak with authority because he has the Spirit of God in him. And that's how he, he proclaimed. Because when he see a person, he doesn't see your white, black, polka dot, yellow, brown, green. <laughs> he sees a spirit in you. You know when sometimes when we go out and we see beggars, you know, what do we feel? We feel empathy, we feel pity because we see that they are hungry, they are suffering. And we, when we see people in trials and problems, we see them because we feel them because it's our spirit telling us this person needs help. And that's how most likely God wants us. And this is another thing that's exciting me because when God made us in our image, He already destined us to be in heaven. Haven't we realized that? We are a spirit having a body. We are already destined to be in heaven. The fact that He made us in our image. Hey, you guys, you are not in the body. Your body is not your identity. You are destined for heaven because of your spirit already. It's only up to your choice if you want to go. At the onset, when you were born, you were destined for heaven. You were destined in His arms, in His love. If we only realize we are a spirit, and if we have God in us, Scriptures tells us what? We are eternal spirit. Don't believe me. Believe the Bible, what the Bible says. Romans 8, 9. Romans 8, 5, 8. We, I am, because of the great I am. I am made in God's image. And in God's image, His spirit. And I believe if I live and I see people, not their flesh, not their body, but the spirit inside, then I can love them because I have God's spirit in me. And God's spirit in me helps me to see who you really are. I am a spirit gifted by the great I am. 